Good morning, I'm Sally Pointer and I'm out in the woods and I'm hedge bothering yet again. Now the season is racing away with us this year. Only seems a couple of days since I was saying, oh, leave things a bit longer, it's not ripe, give it time. And now some things are very, very nearly over. Now, luckily I've got a lot in the cupboards from last year still, but there is one thing I do still want to make this autumn. And that's a batch of syrup to use in hot toddies. I make no medicinal claims for this potion, although there's a lot of good things in it that have got a very long history of use and warding off coughs and colds and sneezes. But uh, this is just something comforting and spicy and delicious to have when you're feeling a little bit under the weather, which we all do at some point during the winter. Now the ingredients for this are very simple and you can vary them a bit, but one of the most important ones are rose hips. And I've been watching this cluster of rose hips pretty much all summer long. They had the most beautiful dog roses on them earlier and these have got a really good size. I don't know if you can see by the scale of my hand compared to a lot in the hedges. These ones are really big and they've got a really good colour. So I'm going to be picking quite a few of these now. When you look at them carefully you've got a little brown bit at the end which is where the blossom finished and inside, I'll split one when I get them home, they have got a seed layer which can be itchy and irritating, we want to get rid of that. But first things first, they're easy to pick, they're easy to identify, you're not going to confuse these with many other things I don't think. Um, always though with foraging, if in doubt, check it out and if you're still in doubt, chuck it out. Be certain that you know what you're getting. These have the classic rose leaf and as I say, if you watch your local area in the spring and summer, you'll soon see the roses telling you where to look later. But I want plenty of these. I know exactly what they are. I'm very confident in my identification. And then we'll look for the next ingredient. There we go. I've got two or three big handfuls there. They're perfect. They're just starting to go slightly squashy in some places. And most importantly of all, I've left plenty on the bushes. Never overpick an area. It's not just us that wants a tasty treat, they're really important for the birds and the small creatures as well as as the seeds for future plants. So only take a little bit. I'll find other bushes on my walk home and I'll top up if I need them. Next one on my list I'm actually quite pleased to find. I was starting to worry these had gone completely over. These of course are elderberries. Now not too long ago these were white fluffy heads that people were picking to make elderflower cordial and elderflower champagne but now these lovely blackberries are completely ripe and they've got a really long history in the treatment of winter coughs and colds and sniffles. Again triple check your identification but you shouldn't go too far wrong with these just check that you haven't got something like a dogwood by accident. Nice few heads of these and we're nearly there. There's just one more thing I want for my cordial now and that's a few lovely blackberries. Again very very easy to identify. Look for those bramble leaves and those wicked spines. You're not going to go far wrong with these ones. The exact quantities are relatively irrelevant in this but I'm going for roughly equal parts of each. Blackberries are great because they're very prolific at this time of year and they juice easily and have a fabulous flavour. So, a couple of handfuls of those and let's start brewing our potion. It's incredibly important when you're out foraging not to jump to conclusions. It's easy to think that, oh look, nice pendulous red berries, those must be more rose hips, but let's look closer. I'll just climb into the hedge to get really, really close to you. So, hopefully you can see these are very different. This is bittersweet. This is woody nightshade. Now a lot of people tend to call this deadly nightshade. It's not. Deadly nightshade has blackberries. But those berries at first, don't they look tempting? They really wouldn't do you any good. Look at the leaves. Very, very different to a rose leaf. So this is just a quick reminder. Double check. If in doubt, leave it out. And there's the flowers of the woody nightshade. That should be plenty for our potion today. I'll get those home. Hello sheep, nothing for you. Having got our treasure home, we've got a bit of preparation to do. Now, it's all jumbled up, but the nice thing is they're easy enough to sort out. If you have a look at the elderberries, uh, most of these are ripe, but there's some green ones on there. We don't particularly want the green ones. Unripe elderberries aren't terribly good for you, but the good news is those will mostly 
float off when we rinse them. Now the easiest way to strip them is to use a fork. Just ping off all those berries into a dish and then go back over it and pick out any bits of stalk you've missed. You really don't want the stalk in there. It's bitter and it's got the bits in it that some people react to quite badly and it can make you poorly even if it's well cooked. So that's your first job is to go over the elderberries and remove all of the stalk. The blackberries are much simpler. Just check them over, make sure there's nothing in there that you're not happy with. So you're looking for discoloured ones or ones that have gone a little bit manky. Now the rose hips do need a little tiny bit of care. I've cut this one in half to show you and inside they've got seeds and the seeds have a prickly hair over them. Quite often these were used as a substitute itching powder at school, which was a nasty thing to do to somebody. It was really uncomfortable. You've got to get those out, otherwise it'll really irritate. Now you can scoop them out to start with, but most people actually find it easier just to strain the juice really well after processing. So I'm actually going to chop mine roughly and stew them, but I'm going to be very, very careful in the straining phase. So let's get these prepared. We'll give everything a rinse and then we'll make some syrup. So we've picked over everything. The blackberries and the fallen elderberries from the bottom of the basket have had a rinse. They're fine. The rose hips, pick off any green bits, give them a wash. Now, I was just going to chop these in half, but a friend of mine online says that he generally puts them through the food processor and then just gives them an extra straining. I might try that today. So I'm going to give these a quick whiz. Either way, you can chop them, you can leave them whole, you can just break them up a little bit. The most important thing of all when you're done is to make sure those seeds and hairs get strained out. Now the elderberries, I've picked those over, but you can see there's some green ones and there's some little twiggy bits. Now, one trick that can help is to top it up with water. And what usually happens after a little stir is that most of the unripe ones float up to the top. Now you can either pick them off one by one or sometimes it's easier get a tea strainer, take out a few, pick out the bits you don't want, put them back in. Either way, do your very, very best to get those green ones out and as much of the stalk as possible. A couple of tiny, tiny bits won't hurt, but the bits that quite often make people unwell with elderberry um, are in the stalk and the unripe berries, and more importantly than anything else, it's if it's undercooked. So you've got to make sure you cook elderberry properly. So quick recap, we have got a couple of big handfuls of rose hips that we are going to chop up and make sure there's no green parts left. A couple of handfuls of blackberries, they're fairly straightforward. Elderberries, do your very best to get rid of the green bits and the twiggy bits. Everything's had a rinse, then it's going in the pan which we'll just cover with water, we'll bring it gently to the boil, give it 20 minutes, turn it off, let it cool down to let the juice extract. Whether you add spices or not is a matter of personal taste. I don't like this over spicy myself, but I am going to put in two or three cloves and a pinch of cinnamon powder. So a very subtle spicing. So very quick boil. We don't want to overcook it because the vitamin C, particularly in things like the rose hips, will be damaged if it's overboiled. But it needs to be cooked enough to extract all the juices. So quick boil, turn it down, probably a good mash with a potato masher. Then we'll let it boil before we start straining out the juices. This is boiling away really nicely now. When I covered it with water, I made sure it had enough water in it to float everything, but not too much. It's, it's quite hard to judge exactly. You need enough to really loosen the juices, but not so much that you end up with a watery mixture. Um, I'm just going to go over it now with my potato masher and give everything a little bit of a helping hand. I want to crush all of those berries, particularly things like the rose hips, so that the juice really starts coming out. That's just simmering away. I think maybe 10 more minutes like that with a couple more mashings and then we can let it cool down. So the juice is having its very first trip through a jelly bag at the moment. So all the pulp is in there, all the bits. And when this is finished dripping through and there's no more drops coming out the bottom, I am going to squeeze 
this jelly bag. Now usually that's not something you want to do but I want to make sure I get all the juice out of this. So the first time I squeeze it, then I wash out the jelly bag very carefully and then this juice will go back through it probably twice. I want to be absolutely certain there are none of those prickly little hairs from the rose hips left in it. Beautiful, beautiful colour and I wish you could smell it. It smells fabulous. The juice is just finishing its final drip. It's got a tiny way to go and I'm not going to disturb it. We don't want any of those little hairs in it this time. So quietly dripping, but it's near enough for me to see what I've got. I've got approximately a pint of juice and that means I need approximately a pound of honey. So 450 grams ish. These recipes are always ish. You don't need to be that exact. Use a good quality honey. So as soon as that's finished dripping, the juice goes in with the honey, that goes on to a low heat until it's all dissolved, then it will be boiled very, very briefly just to make sure it's sterilised, and then it's time to mix it all together with the whiskey. And now for the moment of truth. So, the cordial has been boiled very briefly so that the honey has dissolved and it's sterilised. My bottles have also been sterilised, warmed and then scalded out in boiling water so that they're fairly hot. Now I happen to know I've got a litre of juice here so I'm going to aim for, oh I should learn not to do this one handed, I'm going to aim 500ml in each one. How are we doing? Nearly there. Now, as the amount of whiskey you put in at the end, this is very much a matter of personal preference. You know how strong you like your toddies. I'm going to put about there's 500 ml of syrup in each one. I'm going to put roughly 200 ml of whiskey, and I want these to be quite strong because I want to be able to just dilute these very briefly at the end. Of course, if you prefer a different spirit, that is absolutely fine. It does not have to be the world's best whiskey, but again, something with a reasonable flavour. So I've measured out my first batch. That goes in. As soon as it's in, get the lid on. Because we don't want to lose all those exciting juices, um, fumes rather. Give it a little shake. And that, I'm not sure what happened to the light there, but that is your hot toddy syrup just about done. I'll finish the other one and we'll have a quick recap. And now it's made, it should keep more or less forever. Now to use this, you can either just put a splash in a glass and enjoy it as is. It's going to be quite thick and syrupy though. Or add a little bit to a mug and add a splash of hot water to taste. Either way, it's going to be soothing, it's going to be warming. It's got things in it which, as I said, although I make no medicinal claims for them, have certainly been used medicinally for hundreds of years to ward off coughs and sniffles. And it'll bring that lovely autumn taste into your mug in the depths of winter. Happy hedge bothering.